Rick and Morty is back after a six week hiatus and their first point of order, absolutely demolish the fourth wall. Like, completely obliterate it. Even more so than the episode's predecessor, Never Ricking Mort, aka the Story Train episode from season four. Full Meta Jackerick definitely lives up to its name with almost nauseating amounts of meta commentary. But the episode is also doing meta commentary on meta commentary? Meta meta commentary? It was a lot. Let's break it down and talk about if it actually means anything in the scheme of the show. But first, if you like this video, not only do I have a bunch of other Rick and Morty videos for you to check out, but I'll be covering the remainder of season six over the next month as well. I would sincerely appreciate it if you subscribe to the channel and stay tuned. On top of that, if you're looking for even more in-depth Rick and Morty discussion, my podcast Cartoons That Curse has covered all five seasons so far, and we'll be covering season six as soon as it wraps up. So check us out on any podcast platform or the video version here on YouTube. Thanks. Well, this was an interesting episode to say the least. I really enjoyed the cold open playing with the format of a previously on segment, sending Rick and Morty through wildly disparate scenes and sequences of events that never actually happened in the show. I honestly thought for a minute that this might be how they do the entire episode, which would have been pretty ambitious and operated more like a Morty's mind blowers than what this episode ended up being. Part of me wishes they'd tried this, but there were a lot of fun aspects to the episode regardless. I really enjoyed some of the implications from the meta commentary though, like when they're flying through the opening credits and they pass the scene where Rick leaves Morty behind on a random planet to be eaten by monsters. Morty not recognizing the planet basically confirms what this scene has always sort of implied, that this portrays a different Morty. Though I'm not exactly sure how this exactly fits in with the lore involving our Rick and his time before joining up with our Morty, but maybe this isn't our Rick at all. Overall, I did get some chuckles and enjoyment out of the meta commentary. There were some really good creative choices in how they described everything. He wriggled back to the meta layer through a hole in the fourth wall. And I'm sure a lot of people are going to take the angle, Rick knows he's in a TV show confirmed, but I feel like the episode also sort of goes to great lengths to say, don't think about it too much. It gives some good insight into what the writers like and dislike about meta commentary. It sort of hones in on the show's brand of meta jokes. Even though they joke about the idea that they're a TV show, they almost outright say that it isn't actually about any bigger implications for the world or characters. It's not a likable premise. I mean, it's funny when I do a little nod to the viewers, but- What viewers? That's the right attitude, Morty. And these are definitely the parts of the episode I enjoyed the most. Even their blatant admission that this episode is a clear attempt to cater to Emmy voters this season. Is this whole place just a bunch of groan-inducing wordplay for seven TV critics that won't even enjoy it? Or wait, was this actually a joke about me and my homies? Shout out to the six other people who review this show. But the stuff that didn't quite connect for me was the way it tied back into Never Ricking Mort, bringing back Story Lord and even Jesus Christ from that season four episode. That actually was one of my favorite episodes in season four, which I still think is my least favorite season of the show. But the way it connected back to that episode felt really sweaty, which admittedly seemed to be the actual intention behind it. The premise is about how it's not a good premise. It's both being overtly meta and criticizing the outcome of overtly meta storylines, and I guess that's what's kind of tough about this for me. I'm sort of having a hard time figuring out how I feel about it. Because while I appreciate the commentary itself and what it says about how they write this show, showcasing a weak premise as a commentary on weak premises is still sort of a weak premise. <laughs> like, I get what they're doing, I just didn't love watching it, you know? The episode was a real fever dream though, which I think it actually benefits from, because I think it makes the best segments of the episode really stand apart from the parts that I didn't connect to as much. The entire previously on sequence for Jesus' life slash TV show was very funny. I really enjoyed the way they presented his immortality as this hellish existence. Very Wolverine. I also enjoyed the little nod to South Park's episode where Jesus gets totally roided out. You're using Jesus to beat us up? Have you seen South Park? I especially like this because it sort of comes across as an acknowledgement that South Park has done just about everything, in the same way that South Park had to once acknowledge that The Simpsons has done everything. And in all likelihood, shows in the future will probably have to acknowledge a lot of the stuff Rick and Morty has done as well. Good call out, Morty. That's the kind of meta I like. The kind that keeps us creatively accountable. <laughs> We've actually seen the show do this before too, in their Emmy winning season 4 entry, the Vat of Acid episode. Yes Morty, I saw it on Futurama. Oh, so you don't do anything unless it's original. Though I will never not be salty that this episode beat Bojack's The View from halfway down. I bring it up whenever I can, you've probably noticed. The other part of the episode I really loved was the headquarters of the self-referential 6, where Rick takes Previous Leon, which by the way, Previous Leon, hilarious name. These self-referential characters are the kind of sweaty that's actually fun. Were those not there before? Guess there's been a Connie Tanuity error. 
mislead, flashback, protagonic, Mr. Twist. I found this entire sequence really funny. Utilizing these story devices and presenting them like superpowers is a really creative idea. This was definitely the stretch of the episode I enjoyed the most. But I can't express how much I loved Brettcon, who was basically presented as a Dr. Manhattan level super being. Brett's a name too. His name could be Retcon. It is and always has been. I just really appreciate this framing of retcons, the way they just have this ability to change anything in any way the writers want, which gives this dude absolute power. You were born without bones. <laughs> This was great stuff, the kind of dorky writing about writing that I appreciate. And to a lesser degree, I did enjoy the big Joseph Campbell introduction. As I'm sure most of you know, he's a writer who developed the hero's journey and wrote about mythology in general. He's basically studied storytelling, and Dan Harmon's writing method, The Story Circle, pulls a lot from the hero's journey. So I did appreciate some of the ways they used him here, using a lot of his own terminology that he coined in his writing. Death is a threshold. What, what happened? You atoned. Though, in some ways, it felt like they were being critical of Campbell too, which I think is super valid. The hero's journey can be a useful tool, like a story circle, but it isn't the be-all, end-all way to tell a story. There's always an old man with soup. Name one story that doesn't have one. Uh, Jack and the Basketball Beanstalk. Basketball Diaries. Every Matrix. Every movie ever. There's other commentary that almost feels like it's railing against the network. I laughed pretty hard at Joseph Campbell himself, giving his two cents on what kind of stories Rick and Morty should be telling. Do some classic adventures. Like season one. I'm so sick of that fucking note. What the f*** does it even mean? But I also never got the sense that the show has had much issue with the network. Adult Swim is historically pretty accommodating, so I wonder if this is actually just throwing shade at fans or critics or people like me who have definitely described the show this way. But the the final act didn't really bring things together in a satisfying way for me. The episode is full of cool ideas and some excellent sequences, and there's a lot about the episode I like, but I was a little tapped out by the time we got to the climax and resolution. It kind of felt like they just proved their point that meta-focused plotlines can't hold the weight of an entire episode by making an episode where the meta-focused plotline can't hold the weight of an entire episode. I don't know if I like it, but I do respect it. At the very least, this episode gave super interesting insights into the writers of the show. There has been a lot of criticism about the overuse of meta jokes in recent season. Actually, I'm pretty sure I'm in an LS Mark video where we talk about exactly this. Oh yeah. There it is. But this episode sort of broke down what the writers do and do not like about their own meta humor. And from their own commentary here, I tend to agree with them, for the most part. Overtly meta plots are not appealing because it erodes the fourth wall. It makes us persistently aware that this is a TV show and not its own living, breathing world. Small nods and jokes can be fun on occasion if they're at least still believable in the context of the world and not just as meta commentary. South Park has, for the most part, walked this line crazy well, especially with that first Streaming Wars special they did this year. But I would personally like to add that I think meta humor can also undercut the stronger emotional moments sometimes, which can really harm the show's resonance for me when that happens. But it is super interesting to see the writers write about and unpack their own writing tendencies. We've got three more weeks of Rick and Morty, and I'm not entirely sure what to expect out of the remaining three episodes. Will we have another two-part finale this year? I expect we'll get a big season finale in some way. They've made big events out of the previous two finales, and it feels like they'll want to maintain that energy. They always seem to be really well received by the fan base, and season three's finale was not received well by the fan base. Next week's episode is called Analyze Piss, which I hope isn't literal piss, because I think after South Park's Streaming Wars Part 2, I just don't need any more pee-related cartoon plots at least for a while. But the clip for the episode features a supervillain named Cookie Magneto who Rick annihilates and criticizes. So I'm wondering if this might be an episode commenting on and criticizing modern superhero movies. The piss they're analyzing being these types of movies. Harmon has been very critical of them in the past. I wanna have an opinion about those boring ass Marvel movies. This is also ironic given that the MCU has been poaching Rick and Morty writers for various projects for years now. In fact, I'm pretty sure the next movie release for them is the new Ant-Man penned by Rick and Morty alum Jeff Loveness, who is a very good writer. But I'm eager to see how the season rounds out. As it stands, I still think this is the strongest season since season three, generally better than seasons four and five, though it also hasn't had any episodes that I have truly loved on a massive level so far, which admittedly season five did provide for me. So we'll see but what do y'all think? Did this meta meta episode work for you? Are you excited about the remaining three episodes? Are you hot or cold on season six so far? Let me know below in the comments. And of course, stay tuned for another breakdown next week. Peace. Johnny!